The talent trade continues on ECW. We were in Tampa, Florida, but unfortunately we didn't get The Rock on ECW. But what we did get was a bunch of people for the blue brand to come and lay some smackdown. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. It's the ECW review for November 20, 2007, just four days after my birthday. I would have been, what, 17 back then? Oh, back when wrestling was half decent. Were you watching this on sci-fi? No, because I didn't have Sky at the time. God damn! So I've seen a lot of this great stuff for the first time ever. I remember watching ECW in this time period on the Daily Motion. So you must remember watching it. No, I don't think I cared enough about ECW to watch it this time. I was seven though, and I can remember it. Well, the great ECW. I'll say most for me, I guess. Uh, anyway, we, we kick off. Like I said, there was a bunch of people from SmackDown here, including the opening match. We got Kenny Dystra. Although, I'm not entirely sure if I'm enjoying this talent trade. I don't mind the odd SmackDown person maybe appearing, but for the past few weeks now, it's been a lot of SmackDown guys, and I'm just not sure ECW is getting the best See, of right. it. They're getting... Don't get me wrong, they've, they've been getting Kane, and, and Kane's a good addition. I don't, I'm not denying that. But other than Kane, it, it basically is the bottom of the barrel that they're forcing on ECW, whereas... I would imagine right now on SmackDown, I, I would say SmackDown's probably getting the better guys from ECW. Yeah, like my problem with this is, so you're getting SmackDown guys like Dykstra, Noble. Um, I mean, I guess the Hardys, MVP and Kennedy are good, right? I'm not really complaining about them, but why are Noble and Dykstra getting prominent roles on ECW? Because that's what I'm saying. No, over but, people who are actually, like, should be getting booked. I doubt... If SmackDown, if you're getting, like, Taker and Edge... I, Fair enough. I, I doubt there is... I doubt there's, like, jobbers on ECW getting prominent roles on SmackDown. Yeah, like, fucking... Balls Mahoney's not going on SmackDown to get a 15-minute match with Taker in the main event. No. And guarantee that's not happening. I know you've been looking for me, dog. But, uh, yeah, keep looking. Match one. First match of the night. Non-title. CM Punk. Kenny Dystra. And CM Punk wins. Wasn't as good as the match against Jamie Noble last week, but... We've had back-to-back -back matches now. CM Punk beating Kenny Dystra, beating Jamie Noble. I did not realise Kenny Dystra lasted this long. This I remember him in the 07 Rumble, and that's about it. I think he survives to 2008. I just... Don't, although Cena does steal Mickey James on him, and then he kind of gets... Uh, I don't know, mate. Yeah, 2008, he probably will last a few more months, but I don't think he lasts much longer than that. I, don't, I just don't think this is really elevating. CM Punk or the ECW World title. Having Punk go, especially last week, he went 50 50 with Jamie Noble. Jamie Noble? Like Jamie fucking Noble. Noble. It's not like he's going 50 50 with guys like Mr. Kennedy or MVP, guys that are higher up in this, the SmackDown tier. You know, he's going. <laughs> CM Punk's struggling to beat bums that can't even go on SmackDown. So, um, yeah, definitely. CM Punk wins, beats Kenny Dicer, 1 2 3. Good night. CM Punk's victorious. Match number two. Elijah Burke comes out, he introduces the new man that he has recruited to be his tag team partner on ECW, and that is none other than Shelton Benjamin. Decent addition to ECW, I think, bringing Shelton from SmackDown to the land of extreme. He defeats Tommy Dreamer. Uh, you've got Shelton Benjamin, probably one of the most athletic men, maybe the most at this point, maybe the most athletic man on the roster in the company, versus one of the most Unathletic men on the roster. Is that fair? That's fair to say. And you know what? It's mad to think Tommy Dreamer's still going. Apparently, Balls Mahoney is more athletic than Tommy Dreamer. He had like a better high school career and stuff like this. He played more sports. I believe that. I, I absolutely, I believe that. I, I can believe that too. Balls Mahoney. I don't know. Could Tommy Dreamer spell sports? Probably not. I don't think he'd spell much. But yeah, he had 12 main offence, as he said on Impact very recently. Kane whipping's not a... I don't believe getting whipped by a Kane is... Singapore Kane's not a sport. Anyway, Shelton Benjamin wins. Hits his Rough Rider finisher. One, two, three. Not quite the gold standard yet, but I'm sure it's not far away. Moving on to match number three. Match heavy here. We're not missing out segments. There just wasn't really any. No. So for whatever reason. It's, it's Jesse and Festus versus Deuce and Domino with Cherry. Now, all of a sudden, we have Morrison and Miz on commentary, and they are the new WWE Tag Team Champions. They won on SmackDown. Not quite sure how it happened. We did not see it, but they now have the SmackDown belts. And I, I, I get this is another good thing, I think, for ECW. The fact that the tag team titles were 
shared between ECW and SmackDown because for a long time, I mean, there only has been one belt on ECW and yeah. not everyone can compete for the ECW World Championship. So I think at least having a set of tag team titles on ECW, I, I, I think it's beneficial. It's, no, like, it, it's another set of gold. It is. It's just a shame it wasn't a year before because then you could have had like Dreamer and Sandman going for the belts or something. Yeah, yeah Alex. They, why? I think they should have had ECW tag team titles. Um, like when maybe he could have had I don't know, Test and Mike Knox maybe they could have been champs or whatever when they took on Dreamer and Sandman or a brand doesn't have much hope when you've won belt and Big Show sure holds it or, fucking or, hostage or, or, or like when Paul Heyman was doing his whole uh, you know when he Test and Hardcore maybe they could have been champs you know, I, I think there was definitely room you've had the Hardy Boys you've had the FBI you had well, that's pretty much it, like, but you had Sylvester Terkai and Elijah Burke. Look, there has been teams and stuff like that, and you've had the originals, they could always team up. You had the originals versus the new breed, but there was no belts on the line. They no. weren't really fighting for anything. You can argue they were fighting to see who was the you know, the the main faction on ECW, but then the day titles decide things in wrestling. No, they that's don't. what that's what everyone's there for. No, exactly. That's what everyone's there for. I mean, you get in the business to win gold. Like, I understand why there's not a mid card or a women's, but there should really be. There should really be a tag title, especially like the roster in 2006. I mean, like, let's be real. If ECW were, if no, if, if the Dudleys were on it, would they have belts? Absolutely. I have to imagine so. No, but look at the first. Look at the first edition of this ECW. Like when they had that battle royal, there was like Roadkill. I mean, you've got Angle as well there. I mean, I don't know why I've mentioned Roadkill before Angle, but point is. Like, you've got all these people. I Wait to RKO were on it. Yeah. DX were on it. They could argue they're raw guys, so therefore they wouldn't really be competing. But, no, I, mean, I just think it would have been better to have a set of tag titles, or maybe even the hardcore... I think this would have been the perfect opportunity to bring back the hardcore title. Mick Foley, they were all talking about the hardcore title and the build-up to One Night Stand anyway. And how Mick Foley's a hardcore legend. And how him and Edge... Remember they were co-holding the hardcore title? Yeah. That This just seems like a, a missed opportunity. No, it does. To have the hardcore title. But, and then you can add a belt for, you know, people that weren't quite main event. Because all, all you had during the first six months was Big Show holding the belt hostage. But we got sidetracked there. Jesse and Festus beat Deuce and Domino as Morrison and Miz watched on. And then they contemplate it, bringing a, a bell to ringside when they take on Jesse and Festus because Festus is a retard. That's pretty much it. He is a retard, and like they were making it as like groundbreaking. But the guy's been a part of the roster six months. I mean, how's no one clocked on to this? Even though they have, but no one's like thought is this a tactic? Come on, man! Pretty good tactic though, if it works. Match number four: Kevin Thorne versus Nunzio. I feel like we've seen this match a shitload of times. But N Kevin Thorne mm -hmm. has changed his attire. He looks like an absolute goofball, man. It just doesn't work. He's still got the same fucking theme. Horses and horses. No, why, why, why are we still doing the vampire gimmick but when he's not being the vampire? No idea. And why is a vampire team up with, with, with two black guys and a school teacher? There's just not a lot in common there. Democrats. The, the new breed just didn't work. It didn't. No, it didn't work and it never it never was going to work. It bet, I mean, I mean, again, tag team. Would well, you not? I think it's fair to say Kevin Foran lost any momentum that he had as soon as he aligned himself with. It, his career has been done. As soon as he aligned. It only would have worked if, you know, they were all vampires. But they weren't, so. <laughs> New breed, that kind of sounds like vampires. It does, doesn't it? Maybe get Raven in there. Right. You know what? See, see, the sad thing is, back when ECW reunited under the WWE brand, a lot of the ECW guys, I'm not saying they were in their... But a lot of them could still go. Yeah. Raven, Rhino, it's just a Dudley's. shame that all these people were in TNA. And as much as I like TNA, and I think from like the car angle, when car angle comes in, it really starts to take off. As much as I like it, I just think ECW would have been so much better had TNA not been around. Yeah. I know, Hell, if TNA wasn't around, car angle probably wouldn't have been able to leave, and <laughs> but I still had car angle on ECW. And TNA, ECW, so, um, buddy. You know, but you know, you, you get butts, maybe. Aye, so. That's it, guys. But, you know, for this match. It was what it was, and Kevin Ford wins, like he always does. He just has these jobber matches and wins, and it doesn't mean anything. But we see him go 50-50 with guys like Stevie Richards and Nunsi, and then he'll come back two months later and, and, and beat them easy, and we're making it as if it's, like, groundbreaking. It's like, well, it's not really. It's Kevin Ford, and the guy's going fucking nowhere. No one likes him, apparently. I feel sorry for we, we KT. It's a shame he can't get hired for AEW. 
Nah. I'd bring him into WWE. Nah, screw it, I would, just to get it right up the elite. You know what? If I ever do Total Extreme Wrestling again, I'm going to hire Kevin Thorne. I'm going to give him the vampire gimmick. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll bring back Ariel too, since she was shafted by Batista. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a video from last week. It was... Now, they hyped this up. This was the only... Um, like This was like the only non-match thing we got throughout the night. But we didn't really get... The, it was like after every match, Taz and Joey Styles would say, Oh, must see altercation last week between Kelly Kelly and Layla L when ECW went off the air. We finally get to see it now. And it was nothing special. Yeah, it was, it was literally a, a couple of slaps and a bit of a pushing match backstage that got quickly broken up. Then we go to the arena floor. It is Thanksgiving. Layla L comes out. There's like turkey. There's all this food. Layla says that she's thankful for the Miz owning her contract and being drop dead sexy. Uh, Layla then says she's thankful she's more beautiful than Kelly Kelly. She's thankful she's been in more magazines than Kelly Kelly. Then Kelly Kelly comes out from behind and throws some food on Layla. And then Kelly Kelly stands there like an imbecile to wait on Layla throwing food back on her. And then... Kate Layla just waits and stands there for Kelly Kelly to throw. It just, I mean, it was awkward. Yeah, the two people who just don't know how to work in a food fight. I mean, I, I can, I, I can almost accept them not being able to work a match. Like, but you, can, you think you could do a wee bit me on a food fight? Yeah, like they're not like it's not like they're pandering to the crowd. Oh, they're distracted. Boom, food in the face. No, it's just like they're just like next spot. Hit me with, hit me with the grapes. Hit me with the cake. Now, hit me with the gravy. Online world of wrestling said. This Thanksgiving food fight was really hard to watch, but was it really any harder to watch than their matches? Because, I don't know, I think this is probably the best thing I, they've done. I'd rather this than the matches, absolutely. And then, speaking of matches, we move on to the main event. Handicap match, Kane versus Big Daddy V and Matt Stryker. And surprisingly, Kane wins. Choke slam on Matt Stryker. One, two, three. We also had that spot during the match where Big Daddy V just, like, grapples you he gets you down on the ground and he like just basically let's be honest he starts humping you i'm not a fan it's fucking weird I, I the, oh he's a big fucking guy i get it right but this is just weird it's almost like this is a mcmahon special that is a mcmahon special and i'm surprised kane took this yeah it takes every week <laughs> <laughs> maybe that must be a rib on kane um after kane wins the match big daddy fee Beats up Kane, destroys Kane, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. ECW ends with Big Daddy Fee being not victorious in the match, but he looked victorious because he was the one standing tall. Kane was the one beating up. I'm just not really... I, I do think Daddy Fee's also went off the boil a bit. I mean, his feud with Boogeyman was pretty good, but when you think about it, it was really one-sided. Yeah. And as soon as they had the match, Boogeyman just literally disappeared. I know he was in that Halloween special thing, but I don't know. I think there was more for Boogeyman and Big Daddy Fee. I just, the Boogeyman. I just think the fact that none of these guys are going to get a pay-per-view match. Well, now that they've linked up with SmackDown, maybe ECW guys might but feature... Big Daddy Fee's in the Elimination Chamber, no way out. Yeah, so I mean, they might feature in a few more pay-per-view matches, but I just think overall we're going to struggle to see these rivalries come to an end because there is no pay-per-view for them and it just seems to fizzle out after a while. Anyway... That's it for your ECW review. Wasn't the greatest ECW. I am going to give it. I'll give it a three out of ten. I'll give it a three out of ten. I'm going to give it a three out of ten. Also, ECW. I, I just think the days ECW getting above a five are gone. ECW. Um. Yeah. No. It start off the. I think it start off the year really strong. Yep. Then you had McMahon, and it just went. Meow. You know what? I think Benoit's killed it. Yep, I agree with I'm, I'm going to blame Benoit. Just shows you the new blood been brought in is not exactly delivered, though. It's not, but yeah. Ever since Benoit done what he done, the show's kind of been doing hell. But that's it. 3 out of 10, guys. Catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.